Good afternoon on the Empty Skull Ranch. Kind of a different side of the ranch in here. This is the Empty Skull office where the magic happens. Well, I don't know about magic, but something sure does happen in here. Loads and loads of projects, as you can see. Today, we're going to make a Civil War era cap. Well, it can't be a real Civil War era cap because we're not in the Civil War era right now, but we're gonna make a repop. And it starts with this. I already started stitching right here. So, let's get into the meat and potatoes. Potato, 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 potatoes. Alrighty. to do some of the parts of it and we're going to use some of this sinew to do the leather stitching parts of it. We got some uh, needles here but as long as I got thread inside of this thing which is not much of it but this guy the sewing all is a lifesaver, lifesaver, lifesaver. It's a lifesaver. So once we start getting the uh, fabric stitched to the band, as you notice, I have fit it to my dome and it fits really nicely. And I can even put such things in it as we're waiting. Anyway, I'm getting off track. Uh, so let's start doing this. I haven't even sketched this out. I haven't even started to figure out how to do this. I'm just going to wing it. Just going to go. Uh, I got some material, got some buttons, I got some buttons, so we're going to see which ones look good on this and go from there. All right, let's go on this wild and crazy ride. For the body of the hat, I have picked up this wool. It's getting towards winter time, it's getting very cold out there, so I figure, you know what, make a nice wool hat, It'd be nice and warm and all that jazz and it's a nice color too i like the color so i think it'll wear well with these buttons or we might go with the old standbys the brass buttons you know you got some real brass buttons coming in here I mean, all right i'm getting off track again let's get this thing going i'm going to cut out some of this just by eye and i'm still wearing the hat band um i'm going to cut out some of this fabric just by eye and um, kind of uh, match it to our band and see where we can go from there. And I'm also going to pick out out of my leather collection uh, some black leather for the bill or the brim and uh, go from there. All right, let's see if we can make this thing look halfway decent. All right, so as you see, I've cut a fraction of that material out and now I'm just going to line it up with this band like so a little easier said than done but basically we're going to bring it back this way kind of outline that hoop there we go back in here that looks like a creature from the dark anyway uh, that's enough of that all right so basically going to line it up like that and make a note as to where these two flaps come together. And I can also rotate it like this and get a better feel on where that tag end is going to be. So rotate it this way and make sure that the material slides and it's even all across. And now you have the tag end right there. 
so you know where to cut. So we're gonna cut out a cylinder for now and we're gonna taper it in as we go up. All right, I've trimmed it and basically made a mental note as to how long this tag end can be before it gets to be too small for the band because it's got to go over the band and it's also got to go over the band doubled up at the bottom. So that is very important. So that one little spot is sticking. There we go. So it's got to go over this band doubled. So we have a tag end of about that much material that we can squeeze together before it interferes with the length of the band. So I'm gonna start stitching that and we'll see how far we get. So as you see, let's let it focus in, focus in. I just put a regular knot at the end of this artificial sinew. It's very waxy and very slippery. So I did a standard regular, you know, box knot or whatever you call those because it would slide together if I did the traditional sewing needle or sewing thread knot, which I can also put another one of those in there just to kind of build up its strength, but it's just going to be to hold the wool together. So I'm going to start stitching. All right, now that we've got this cut out, kind of looks like a little sack, but I also got a piece of full grain leather, not a perfect circle, but I cut it out anyway to put as the top portion of the hat. This is gonna go underneath the wool. So the way I'm gonna measure to make sure that this is the right size circumference wise, I'm gonna take, see the scruffy spot? I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna match it right up to here. Now roll it across like that all the way around this piece of leather, uh, leather, piece of wool, like so, and wind up on the other side. I just wanna make sure you don't slide on the uh, fabric at all. Come around here and look at that scruffy spot again. So this should fit on the top right there. So I'm gonna turn it upside down like that so this part will be visible from the inside of the hat, not the rough out. So I'm gonna take the rough out and I'm gonna glue it to some of this wool and make it a disc. All right, let's get to it. I'll take some of this stuff and just put it around, making a small bead of it. I don't want a whole ton of this stuff in there because then it'll take forever to dry. And all I wanna do is just hold this steady on the fabric. So that right there should about do it. Just enough to hold that fabric steady. Now I'm sure back in the 1800s they might have used beaver grease, hog tar, or the various things to do with this, but in the absence of hog tar, we're gonna use E6000. All right. So now that this has been placed on top of here, it's not gonna quite suction it down to it right away, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim this around here. Doesn't have to be perfect. But enough so that the fabric extends all the way to the edge of that leather disc. And like I said, guys, there we go. So, should have probably done this before I did this the sewing. Now we're just gonna turn this upside down over that, and we're gonna start making this seam right here. Sewing that all the way around. Alrighty, I'll be back as soon as that's sewed all the way around. First off, I figured I'd show you how to use this sewing awl with 
leather. So you take your surfaces, make them together, and then you poke that through wherever you want your surface to be, right there. And then you poke that through. And once you've gotten it through, make a little loop of it on the smooth side of the needle because the other side has a groove that the uh, sinew goes into. This is a little bit of a different type of sinew. This is cotton, waxed cotton. So first side goes all the way through and then you start your process all the way around. So as you go through each subsequent time, I'll show you the first stitch. You poke this through right next to where you want your next step to be. And then you pull it back and see that loop it makes. Take your tag end of this stuff. And then you poke it right through that. And then you continue on your merry way all the way around. It's kind of a, there you go. So that repeated. And then you pull it tight and that's your first loop. And you just continue going all the way around thusly. All right. As you see, there we go. Just continuing around and around. Bring that in there. Poke through. That one's kind of a long step, but, and here it is. Now we gotta do the band. Don't worry, I know this looks kind of strange like this. It's gonna make sense once it comes all together. Alrighty, now let's get the band and the bill put together. But first, we gotta inside out this thing in order for it to start making sense. All right, it always folds out of here. Get this to sit right at the end, right there. Get the fold in a little bit right there. So basically that is the top of the cap. Let me get that side a little bit more figured out. There we go. Maybe fold it in a little bit. There we go. That is the top of the cap. Starting to kind of look familiar, huh? All right, so now let's get this band in there. Band in the bill, band in the bill. All right, I got the bill or brim cut out. It's just a rough cutout right now. This side's a little long, but the profile in here is what I'm interested in. So if I can get this, to match up with an existing hat that I have, place it in here and just kind of form it to that shape where this is known to fit my head. I will then start sewing it between the wool and the leather layer. And then at the end, I will do the final shaping. So let's get to it. Here is the rough fit hat as it is now and this guy will go in between these two layers so it'll be on the front like so starting to look like a hat so i have placed this inside like i showed you before but notice i folded that to the inside and put the seam to the seam and I'm gonna start with the stitching all, like I showed you, and go all the way around until I get to where the brim has to go in. And we'll meet up once we get to that point. Yeah. We're about halfway across the brim right now, and you can d hear the dogs go on off out there, so they're uh, a little startled. I am too, but as you can see, the brim is getting stitched in little bit by little bit. Just got to keep that motion going throughout the rest of it. But as you can see, it is getting stitched in. So 
I'm gonna continue on. Tried to line it up to the back as good as I could, and it looks like it's actually getting there. So, I'm gonna continue on, and I'll be right back. So here we are, last stitch on that part. Now this looks a little tall, but you will see why it is that height in a second. So, just gotta get the last stitch through there. So we're gonna pop it right through there. Bring it back down to that loop. And now we're gonna feed more out of the spool. Oh yeah, we're gonna do this part right here. So, feed some more out of the spool. And then cut that, tie it in a knot, a couple knots, and then we're done that part. All right. And now that we got the hat in itself completed, I trimmed up the brim a little bit more to kind of make it a little bit more even, but we'll have to see when the finished product is staring us in the face. So right now, we have to add the chin strap. So that is the one that's gonna require these buttons. So I kinda of like the looks of these buttons with the stars. Then there's the old standby, the brass. So I am having a difficult time choosing which button. You know what, I think I'm gonna go with the stars. That is my final choice. My answer, and I'm sticking to it. So let me pull these little guys out of here, out of here. And we are going to cut the chin strap with these guys here. I don't know if you can see it from that distance. But those are going to go on the chin strap. So let's get that cut out. We got a nice piece of leather right here pretty decent. So I will cut out kind of the shape that roughly what it would have been like back then. So. so here is the rough chin strap. I'm not going to make it a full slider because I'm never going to actually, never going to actually use it as a chin strap. So I'm not going to do the full, I was going to do the, uh, the sides here and make it fully adjustable, but just gonna do it for the show purpose. You know, just for, for show, just to give it the illusion. So, but I will mock it up with a little bit of slack on it so that it stands out and doesn't kind of blend into the gray. So, a couple of other little things that I wanted to add to it was some of these little slide buckles. Now I can do two, one for each side, or one in the middle. I haven't quite figured it out yet, so if I throw those on there and work it through like so, I could do one on either side. Yeah, that's how I'm going to do it, one on either side. I think that'll give it a cool look. It will give the illusion of that workable chin strap without actually having it be a workable chin strap. So, basically what she's going to look like, like that. Just with those two buckles right there. So, when it goes on here like so, they will stick out on the edges like that. So let's get a couple of relief slots for the buttons. I'm actually going to see what it would have looked like to put one in the middle, just so I can get it. You got to do that just for comparison's sake, what it would look like with one in the middle. Actually, you know what? It does give a little bit more of an authentic look with only one on it, come to think of it. So, let's see. So that is with only one on it. 
and then it'll have the buttons. I think that kind of gives it an authentic look to have just one in the middle. You know what? One in the middle is the way I think I'm gonna go with this. One in the middle and then the buttons. I mean, I can always change it, but one in the middle with the buttons will kind of look like that. Now, if I wanted to do one on the end, it would give that type of a look. You know, I will do just the single one in the middle for now. I think that'll give it the most authentic look. Now I just gotta find another button. There it is. So I want the button to kind of sit right in the middle of that spade shape. So, or a uh, kind of a wedge shape. I don't know what you would call that. And it's not, eh, maybe scalloped, but all right. Make sure our cut is gonna be right in the middle so it's not lopsided. We don't want to cut too aggressively. You can hear it going into it. Don't want it to go much more than just a little bit. Just a wee bit. Actually, you know what? I think a knife would be a better choice. Famous last words as I slip and cut my thumb open, right? <laughs> no, I think this is the this is the way to do it. So, the button will stick through the leather like so. So basically get the other side the same way. And look at that, those scallops were pretty close together. They're pretty close to even. So, I'm gonna do the same on this side. Try to land that guy right in the middle. Nice little slit. And get the other one right through it as well. There we go. Both sides have a button. This side's a little scraggly looking. That side looks a little bit better. That'll be on my good side. Right. I might actually be able to trim that up and make it look a little bit more respectable. There we go, just a little bit more. So now I got to get these clips on here and stick these right at the ends. So it's going to go pretty close to the center of the hat. If it was a chin strap, that's about where, excuse me, uh, that's about where they would be right about there. So let's get those holes placed. So here it is with the chin strap attached. Shape the brim just a little bit more and over time, kind of give it a couple of tweaks here and there to get it to do what you want it to do. But now we gotta bring down the top and give it that typical Civil War type of look. So I'm gonna do a little bit of forming right here and see what we need to do. And I'll put a little stitch in the back and in the front to kind of keep its shape. But by and large, Once I have it all figured out, that is pretty much the shape she is going to have. And there it is. That is your Civil War style cap. I'm not mad at it. I think it's, uh, I think it came out 
halfway decent for not having a plan at all. When I started this, I hadn't sketched it out. I hadn't done any uh, plannings on how I was going to go about it. Just uh, kind of gave it a shot and went with it. So there she is. All righty. Let's see how it looks on. Well, there it is. Like I said, I'm not mad at it. I got to do a little bit of shaping with the brim. Kind of give it that authentic type of look. But, yep, yeah, not mad at it. I think it looks all right. I think it looks all right. Considering it was just a thrown together type of project. But, but there it is in all of its glory and all those spooky faces behind me. But till next time, we'll see you around on the Empty Skull. Right.